Hey guys, Wildrum here, and today I'm presenting to you an entirely blueprint free 2x1 base with excellent expandability, high protection and lots of storage, all at a low cost. In this video I'm going to be showing you the progressional build stages all the way from a wooden 1x1 to my take on a final design that can be comfortably used as a main base for a solo or a duo for a chilled wipe. The idea is for the starter of this base to be as easy and accessible to build as a standard 2x1 but with far more potential to expand into a highly efficient main base. The core is set around a double bunker design similar to my Witcher solo base, except with absolutely zero blueprints required. Due to the simple footprint of a 2x1 with a triangle, this base is open to be expanded in so many possible ways, and I invite you to take the idea and run with it, coming up with your own unique designs on how to turn this 2x1 into a fierce main base. You guys have been absolutely killing it recently, and I'm well on the way to 3,000 subscribers, and I can't thank you enough for that. But now, stick around for my take on the 2x1. I'm going to be taking you through all the steps quite slowly, as I want this to be easy for all players to follow. There is no exact rocket count for this base, as the limit is down to how much you want to upgrade. But if you decide to leave the base as I show you in this video, then you will have a base that's 12 rockets minimum to reach the tool cupboard, which is very respectable for a cheap and simple honeycomb 2x1. The best part about this is that even though it's completely blueprint free, the raid cost of 12 is not only the minimum to reach the tool cupboard, but also the minimum to get to any of your main loot, which is the full open 2x1 core, meaning you have a very strong chance of your base surviving against any casual raiders, while losing none of your important items. If throughout the wipe, you can get a hold of the garage door blueprint, that will give you the potential to improve the raid cost even further. And if you combine that with the extra HQM and sheet metal upgrades, you can quite easily turn this 12 rocket base into a 23 rocket raid. I try and upload as often as I can, so if you aren't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more builds. Without further ado, onto the base build. As I previously mentioned, I wanted this build to be as accessible as possible for all players. So with that in mind, we're going to start off with a wooden 1x1. One one. Go ahead and place your sleeping bag, boxes, furnace, and you can even fit a tier 1 next to the tool cupboard. If you're worried about door campers, a nice little trick is to place a campfire next to your front door, turn it on, and if your comfort exceeds 50%, then there is another player standing outside your door. If it stays at 50, you're good to leave your base. When you're ready to expand, there's another square foundation. Use door frames rather than single doors to create more space in your base. You can now place two more furnaces and sleeping bags. I wouldn't recommend using this base if you have more than two players. Once you've farmed up enough stone, go ahead and upgrade the whole 2 by one Once you've cooked up enough metal, you can replace the wooden double doors with sheet metal double doors. When you're ready to expand further, place a triangle foundation, two full height walls and two half walls. A furnace can then be placed to access your roof. Place two more half walls, a door frame with a double door inside it and then a wooden triangle ceiling. What I like to do is place foundation steps to access your main entrance. You're going to need a bit more of an airlock, so place two full height walls and a single door frame. The great thing about this type of airlock is that the double door opens outwards and covers the single door, preventing anyone from going deep on your base. Once you feel like you need a bit more storage, clear out the whole 2x1, however leaving the tool cupboard and the tier 1 workbench. Pick up the sheet metal double door and upgrade the frame to sheet metal. Replace the double door and then place large boxes in the following formation. To place more boxes in this one by one, you're going to need to head outside and copy the following structure. This can all be built out of twig as it's only used to place the triangle on the inside of your loot room. 
Once you've placed that square tile, you can head back inside and place the triangle from the left wall. Upgrade the triangle to wood. Then, you can squeeze in two more large boxes on the top half. Now, you can fill up the second one by one. To do this, I like to place large boxes in a bit of a spiral and then three more small boxes. I'd recommend upgrading the door frame to sheet metal. Make sure you replace the double door before you place the boxes. Now you can squeeze your bag in next to the furnace. Make sure it's not too close to the 1x1 or you won't be able to place your bunker. We're going to place one triangle honeycomb. Inside it, we're going to integrate a triangle at half height. This will allow you to place the twig to place your bunker from within inside the base. While standing on your furnace, place a twig floor tile and then a roof on top of it. Upgrade the roof to stone or sheet metal and that's the bunker complete. This will force raiders to either blow directly through the wall or blow through the bunker. And that's the core 2x1 done. If you wanted, you could leave this as your base and it works as a perfect starter. However, I'm going to take it a little bit further. At the moment, the base currently sits at four rockets since it's all stone. So I suggest that the first thing that you do is make all of the core plus the chute sheet metal. By making it sheet metal, the base is now going to be a minimum of eight rockets to raid. Although, now that the base is sheet metal, when sealing off your bunker, make sure that the roof you place is also made out of sheet metal. In order to reach the 12 rockets, we also need to add some stone honeycombing around the sheet metal 2x1. To do this, remove the wooden foundation steps and place triangles all around the 2x1. Once those are sealed off, we now need to deal with the top of our base. First, we're going to need a way up, so we're going to place some more foundation steps followed by a small jump up created from a wooden half wall and a wooden triangle. Above the triangle that leads to our chute, place two stone half walls with a triangle on top and then a double door frame. Place two more frames to put shot fronts in. Place two more half walls to seal it up and then a triangle on top. Similar to the first floor, we're going to place a single door frame with a sheet metal door inside. Place your shot fronts facing outwards to leave more space within the base. Now that we have our top floor complete, you can remove the double door from your chute and then hatch it out the wooden triangle that you placed earlier. That opens the chute and allows you access to your top floor. The top floor will now be your main entrance to the base. Now that we have a new main entrance, we can seal off the second floor. The furnaces that were placed earlier should now be removed and moved to the top floor. On the middle floor, the single door frame and the wall either side of the chute should be upgraded to sheet metal. In the one by one next to the chute, then place a repair bench with two small boxes underneath it. In the one by one above the tool cupboard, a tier 2 workbench can be placed along with some more boxes. By placing a triangle at half height, you can now fit two more large boxes. This can sometimes be a tight squeeze, but keep going until you get the right position. What I'm going to do now is properly demonstrate how to seal your double bunker design. Walk onto the furnace and look upwards and place a twig floor. From exactly the same position, you can now place a twig roof. Walk through the sheet metal door and then pick it up. Now you can walk through into your loot room, look up and upgrade the top roof to stone. Make sure you leave the floor as twig. You can now replace the sheet metal door. 
Drop back down onto your furnace, open the double door. You can now place another twig floor and another roof tile. Now upgrade that roof to sheet metal. And that is your bunker complete. When you wake up the next morning, simply remove the twig and the bunkers will clear. You will also want to upgrade the entire middle core to sheet metal. This will give a much higher cost to the secondary loot room. What we're going to do is alter the way of accessing your front door. Place a wooden door frame and a wooden wall, followed by two wooden window frames. Then seal it off with a triangle. Place a furnace facing backwards as far in the triangle as possible. Place another door frame and another wooden door. Before we seal off our roof, we're going to need to honeycomb the chutes. To do this, place two stone triangles either side of the chute and place walls two levels high. Upgrade all of this to stone to keep a minimum cost of 12 rockets to the core. Finally, seal up your roof however you like. I'm going to place two window frames and then the wall frame. I like to place wooden window bars in the window frames. They give a little bit of protection and you can comfortably shoot out from your roof. Next, place your wooden double door and then a research table. I would be careful about keeping items in this large box as people can lose it from outside. Next, place two wall frames on the triangle and then build your helipad. Very finally, you can remove your tier one and replace it with a large box. Congratulations, you have built my 2x1 base. If you enjoyed the base, make sure you subscribe if you're not already and like the video. And let me know your thoughts. Wiljam, out.